careful not to catch any of those wires as you're pulling up the steering column. Good job, Dad. And now we have easy access to the pedals. But that's not the reason we pulled out the column, because on the column we're probably gonna do some work to it and take out that that lever and change out the plastic pieces as well because we have an extra column. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rip out the brake pedal assembly right now. And there's just that screw right there to take out, and then the rod's gonna come out this way. And then of course you have to detach the the uh, master cylinder brake lever or, or rod there. All right, it's as simple as that. Just take out that rod and then brake pedal assembly's out. Now the new clutch pedal assembly can go in. So here are the new pedals that I restored. Uh, Sandboss painted black and then I put some wheel bearing grease on the old bushings I'm on, on both sides of the pedals. And then I'm gonna grease this up to slide it through and then attach it. To the to the cab. All right, so I've got the the clutch pedal pedal uh, assembly in here, and I've just got the clutch pedals sitting there for now before we get the column in. And then um, just while you're in here, make sure that the you reattach the brake pedal with the clip, and then that that switch right there for the the, uh, the brake lights. So, so it's set up so that when you push in the brake pedal, that goes off and then that turns on the brake lights and then when you release, it goes back in. So that should work. And then if it needs adjusted, we can pull that out a little bit. Alright, so this is the column out of the automatic truck. This is column out of the uh, manual truck where we've taken the transmission and all the, the transfer casing, etc. Um, so we're just having a look at now uh, to remove the, we're thinking of using the automatic column if we can. Because <clears throat> it's, it's a nicer shape. shape. It's a nicer shape. This one's pretty rough there at the, uh, at the rag joint. So we're going to pull this automatic handle off to see if the, uh, the plastic covers or shrouds, whatever you call them, uh, will fit over top of this assembly here. You'll, you'll notice here, we're going to try to pull this handle off, but this the shift assembly is still going to stay inside the column, or this manual column here, that's not there. So we're not sure if that plastic will fit over top. So we're going to try that next. Okay, we've got the shift handle from the automatic out. It was just a matter of uh, this pin here. Just took a punch, a few good, uh, good hard wax, loosened it up, and then it, then it slid right out. So now we'll see if these uh, plastic covers will fit over top. Okay, so after a little bit more in, more inspection of both columns. Um, we've decided that instead of trying to use the, the manual column plastic on the bottom of the automatic column, we're just going to go ahead and use the manual column and switch over the, the, the nice steering wheel from the automatic and put it on the manual and also... Well, you, you, you can't use the plastic. You, you can, but... but You'd have to end up cutting this, and then you wouldn't be able to switch it back if you ever had to, and because you'd have to cut that right. That's out. your automatic gear selector, just for the plastic to fit. So um, we're gonna just use the manual column instead, and put all the nice stuff on that column, and then that way we can sell this as a kit with the the automatic transmission in case anyone's trying to go from a manual to automatic swap. Just did some reciprocating saw action. Get those rusty old bolts off. Spilt vibrated off her hands. And you're gonna punch those out, right, Dad? Yeah, can you just hold it some underneath the truck now? Um, since we unattached that rod there at the top, I'm gonna unattach it here at the bottom just to get it out of the way. And there's a bolt right up in there and it's also mounted on the frame right there. So we'll take those off and then that'll be out of the way to make things easier to, to drop down. So I'm gonna take this off next, which I believe is the kick down, and that goes all the way back down into the trans the automatic as well. So we'll take that off up here and then off down there as well. I'll show you. 
And that comes in. That's this right here. all the way up up to the injection pump. Kickdown's off. All right, gonna go ahead and pull off the front and rear drive shafts now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two tranny coolant lines right here where my finger is. And that, they just run up to here. And there's a little rad at the front of the truck which I think that's for, and then, uh, so I'll just pop that off, and then maybe plug those for now. Okay, so when we got all the transmission parts, uh, the guy gave us a complete set of gauges, and with that, there's this little block off plate where on an automatic truck, there's the park reverse neutral drive indicator, and so we're gonna take that off of our truck, and then put this block off plate onto the good set of gauges before and after the block off plate All right, so in order to remove these lines they're attached up in here and I'm going to try and remove both those lines there and then we'll be able to take all the lines off um, off the transmission completely I already took it off of here on the driver's side of the transmission and then uh, at the front as well so we've, we've pretty much got everything disconnected now. Uh, the entire wiring harness, there was like three or four plugs. Uh, there's one for the speedometer sensor on the transfer case, one for the four-wheel drive on the transfer case, and a couple of on the transmission. And now we're gonna use our redneck transmission jack to support the transmission and then take out the bell housing bolts and support the back here with the um, jack stand and then drop the entire thing as one unit. We have another floor jack that will probably come in handy. Okay, this is the engineering just to get the top bolt. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven extensions. Here, let me get a closer view. Just to get to the top bolt on the bell housing and we got it. And a universal. And a universal on the end and we got it. Work so whatever works. Right? So um, we pried back the transmission a little bit with a couple of big pry bars and I think we just cleared enough so that we can drop it now because there's a bunch of ATF pouring out. Yeah, a good lesson learned might be uh, just to drain the tr automatic tranny first before you uh, start to pull it off and it might save a lot of tranny fluid on the floor. So we're just going to wait for that to drain and then we'll see if it drops. So I just had to remove the transfer case shift lever or at least move it out of the way because the it was hitting the back of the, the hole on the floor. We couldn't move it back anymore. So we've got a bit more of a gap in between there. So we'll see if we can drop it now or go back at least a little bit more. All right, so to get the torque converter bolts off, I mean, as you can see, it's very difficult. You'd think it'd be very difficult to get it, the bolts because there's like no room between the, the block and the, the, the back of the bolts. They go the, the opposite way that you'd think. So an easy way to get them is there's an access plate on the back of the, um, the back of that spacer plate between the block and the transmission 
and this little plate you just have to take off these two bolts and then you should be able to to uh to get all the flex plates bolts off or the torque converter bolts off right here you can see now that the torque converter has been removed um the flex plates left so we're going to take the flex plate off and then put on the flywheel and uh, align the clutch with the pressure plate i'd recommend we cut the hole in the floor first but we should probably cut the hole in the floor <laughs> <laughs> so we don't get any metal filings on the on the new clutch and stuff okay explain what you're doing here okay took a measurement from the uh front of the bell housing off the top two bolts to to about the center of the shifter and uh, it's about 13 inches so if we uh, take two tape measures up here we both meet at 13 inches that should mark our uh, center point so drop your uh, drop your tape measure in the bolt hole or the corner of it drop the corner of it in the bolt hole okay we triangulated our uh, position 13 inches each from uh, the two top bolt holes on the bell housing X marks the spot, so we're going to drill a pilot hole and then uh, cut a hole probably about three and a quarter inches, three and a half inches to uh, to start with. That should allow us to get the shifter in and then fine tune from there. Okay, I'm back now. These pilot bushings are made out of uh, bronze, which is oil impregnated. So. It's recommended that these bushings be soaked in oil, motor oil, for, uh, before installation. So we're just going to let that soak before we get the, the file on. That should help with proper lubrication of the input shaft on that bear, or bushing. Okay, so here's the clutch master cylinder and slave cylinder setup. This mounts on the firewall with this bracket here. Um, this goes on the engine bay side of the firewall and it has its own grommet and this is the bracket on the inside and it just slips on and this twists in place and mounts on there um, and then that's it as simple as that and that's for the the clutch safety switch that we have to wire up to there's a couple wires in there existing that were for the trailer brake that we have to we're gonna move and rewire into a different location so all right so the way this clutch master cylinder mounts because there's this little L bracket that lines up with the, the pedal bracket assembly there on the firewall so there's four bolts that I have that are going to go through there which mounts this bracket and then the, the clutch master cylinder can mount to that bracket through the firewall full restoration right New hose clamps, brand new. So the the clutch master cylinder mounts up here on the firewall on this truck. The holes have already been drilled from the factory and they're already there with the divots. And then that just sticks in there and then twists to the right on the bracket that was mounted inside the cab. And then and then the slave cylinder runs all the way down the bell housing and mounts on the bell housing. So we've got the reservoir mounted up and it says to fill it with dot three brake fluid. So we'll do that. Okay so we're just putting the flywheel on now. We installed that uh, uh what do you call that bushing? The pilot, pilot bushing. Pilot, pilot bushing. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Pilot, yeah. pilot bushing and now we uh, put the flywheel on the back of the crankshaft with all the flywheel bolts and the torque specs for that are 55 foot-pounds with red Loctite. 